This is about the evolution of a brand from small acorns do giant oak trees grow. Gordon Ramsay, who I photographed four times in about 15 years. The first time I photographed him, he just opened a new restaurant. I had no idea who he was. It was in the Fulham Road and it was called Aubergine. We parked the car. It was easier to park your car in London back in those days, no congestion charge. And we went into this kind of small, modest place. It didn't look like the start of something as huge as Ramsey eventually became. We were greeted warmly. He was really friendly and he said, do you want a cappuccino? Back then, coffee wasn't such a big thing. I mean, this was 1996. For me, it was the height of sophistication to have a, have a cappuccino every now and then. I can still remember, you know, over 20 years later, it was the best cappuccino I've ever had. I always used to ask chefs to prepare some food for the photographs, mainly because I'm greedy. And after we've taken the pictures, obviously you're not gonna waste the food, so you end up eating it. We started in the kitchen and I used my Hasselblad, my medium format camera, and I put some rolls of Tri-X black and white film in. And I basically did documentary reportage type pictures of him in the kitchen. The phone rang, he was taking bookings. The kitchen was really cramped. It was a really modest restaurant. It was a small place, not the most glamorous part of the Fulham Road, but I guess it was his start. After I'd got my reportage pictures, the black and white pictures, I put some transparency film, which I intended to cross process, and I did some setup portraits. I noticed there was a guy there. He had a great profile. He was very handsome and he was sort of in the background. He was probably a trainee and I thought, he'd be good to have in the photograph. So I got him in the corner of the frame, in profile, doing some washing up or something, but I thought nothing of it. In 2018, I posted the picture on my Instagram. Jamie Oliver direct messaged me and said, the guy in the photograph, did I know that he is now a really famous chef and his name's Freddie Forster. So shout out to Freddie. The following year, after I did my shoot, the restaurant was awarded two Michelin stars and Ramsey was on his way. The second shoot, 4th of May, 2004, was at a greasy spoon on the King's Road. Further east from the original aubergine restaurant, he brought along his son, Jack, who happened to be exactly the same age as the guy who makes these videos, my son, Fred. I was at a little bit of an advantage uh, over maybe some other photographers who didn't have children because I was able to kind of relate to Jack and persuade him to be in the photographs with his dad. Of the four shoots that I've done with Ramsey and all the photographs I've taken, this is probably my favorite because I think it's a very personal picture and quite powerful. And it looks like Gordon with his mini me. It was a tricky location because there were a lot of other customers. I was struggling a little bit and you can see it in the contacts because I was sort of trying different locations, but eventually we found a little booth and I got my assistant to sort of hold a light with a soft box and it worked really well for lighting both of them together. We ordered our little breakfasts. Jack was sitting next to Gordon and it was very sweet. Jack was only too happy to sort of copy what his dad was doing. And it made for a very sweet, somewhat sentimental, but a very sweet picture. Ramsey obviously liked the photo because it was on his wall when I came to photograph him at his home for the third shoot in the series. This shoot was for Glamour magazine and it was the 22nd of September, 2006. Gordon had just moved into this quite amazing, genuinely impressive house in Wandsworth. I won't say where it is. So I was doing documentary in his kitchen to start with before I did a portrait. And it was terrific because the extension in the house was like a glass box. So there was plenty of daylight. I could just use the available light and it worked really well. While I was doing this, there was a big entourage. There were people from Glamour, there were stylists, there were food stylists, there were home economists, there were all these different kind of elements that you have when you do a big shoot with what he was now, a big celebrity. And 
There was this guy, Gordon's PR. He was really belligerent and he sort of somehow gleaned that I hadn't signed this contract, giving them and the magazine control over the pictures. As I've mentioned before, it's a good idea, good advice for any photographer, do not sign contracts, especially don't sign something on the, of the day of the shoot because that's kind of under duress, that's not really fair. This PR was very aggressive, very hostile, and he was really upping the ante and I couldn't really take him seriously. I wasn't gonna sign the contract. And I remember Chris, my assistant, sort of arguing with the, with the PR and both Gordon and I were sort of finding it actually quite funny and not really taking it that seriously. Needless to say, I didn't sign the contract. If I had, you wouldn't be seeing these pictures. I think the lighting of note that I'd like to draw your attention to in this part of the shoot was using an infrared trigger to light a flash that was in the kitchen lighting Gordon. So I was able to, from the outside looking in, use this trigger to trigger the flash and light him and then make it kind of quite dramatic and moody. And there's a sort of voyeuristic sort of element to this picture as well, which is kind of quite interesting. The fourth and final time that I photographed Gordon was for BT Business Broadband. I shot loads and loads of celebrities for this particular advertising campaign, among them Peter Jones and various other uh, luminaries. And I only did this one shoot, I think, with Gordon. And I remember sort of saying to Gordon that this is the perfect gig as far as he's concerned because he's essentially being paid by BT to embellish his brand. They're actually promoting him as much as him promoting BT. Win-win. Now, I've shot loads of chefs over the years. Um, Jamie, obviously, Nigella, they all sort of are known by their first names. Marco Pierre White, who was Gordon's mentor. And I think the whole phenomenon of the celebrity chef is a really good thing because they've kind of really reconfigured the culinary landscape. Restaurants have got better. People appreciate the value of, of cooking and, and actually enjoying a good meal and preparing a good meal. It's a sort of creative outlet. And what I think would be nice is if there were photographers who did the same for the medium I love. Reflecting on Gordon's career, you know, all those years ago when I went to Aubergine to photograph him, this tiny restaurant on the Fulham Road, it's definitely the case that from small acorns do giant oak trees grow.